Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Linda Erickson, Executive Director and CEO of the Da Vinci Science Center. Linda has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Lynn, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Talk about the Da Vinci Science Center. So we really work to inspire kids to be curious and to explore the world around them through observation, experimentation, and that connection between the arts and sciences is fascinating and we embrace that fully. So Da Vinci Science Center was established 20, 25 years ago here in Bethlehem actually, started at Lehigh University. But today we have an incredible hands-on uh, exhibit experience located at our Science Center, which is on the campus of Cedar Crest College. We also offer lots of programming both at that campus and through partnerships that we do in the community with schools and other community organizations. How do you view the educational process for children? What do you, what do you see yourself as encouraging in terms of how, the ch how children think about their own ability to educate themselves? We want to capture their interest. So we're first and foremost probably about having fun. And if we can capture the child's interest and then get them to explore further, and then they start to build some skills and some confidence, we think we've done a great deal. So you're talking about empowering children to guide themselves in, in the way that Leonardo did, as a matter of fact. Yes, Leonardo was so immensely curious. So if we can inspire that curiosity and engage kids over time, we can make a huge impact. So in terms of how you shape your programs, um, that would mean that a lot of the programs are kind of unfinished so that the, so the children can actually finish them, right? They, you, you provide knowledge, you provide an experience, but it's not sort of all packaged and then uh, in, in a rote learning kind of way, the children are intended to do this, this, or this. It's really a facility that allows for exploration. Yes, because we're talking about something that's called science inquiry. So it's the scientific process, and we want to engage young people in becoming scientists or thinking like scientists and having the opportunity to make observations, test out some of their ideas. Uh, in parallel to that is something called design thinking and the engineering design process. So what's most important actually in our educational outcomes today is teaching kids to immerse themselves and experience scientific inquiry and design thinking because knowledge is exploding. As you know, we can't possibly keep up with all the content knowledge, but we need young people to be able to explore and know where to find information and know how to think and how to solve problems. And that's where we can make the greatest impact. So the two threads are really important. In, in terms of a scientific inquiry, you start with a question. Yes. You come up with a hypothesis and then you test the hypothesis. There's a whole workflow that has applications throughout a life. And design thinking is something else. You're trying to solve a, a problem and you're trying to solve it as elegantly as possible. So you test a lot of different models mm -hmm. and try to figure out which of those models has, has attributes that are, that are best suited for the solution of that problem. So you have two different, one is the, it's starting off with a question and trying to develop an answer and the other is trying to figure out how to create a solution, a design that works really well. Yes, so let me give you an example maybe of the latter because I think it's uh, illustrative and it will be helpful to the viewers that are watching this and it also really shows the connection to science and the arts. So this year we are running a Rube Goldberg contest. So if you know Rube Goldberg, the cartoonist, um, and he's a storyteller and he's an artist but he came up with these crazy contraptions. So this will be a contest that we will encourage schools throughout the region and teachers and teams of students to work on. Uh, the actual contest is actually about turning, at, turning um, off a light, but we're working very closely with the Allentown School District and fourth graders and teachers and kids throughout the year um, associated with a unit they're doing on simple machines. So they'll be learning about simple machines, but at the same time, those teams of students will be coming up with a crazy contraption and they'll have a story to the design they create and they will illustrate it, but then they have to create it and make it work. And we think that's gonna be really fun. We have an inventor's lab where kids come up with their own inventions, 
but the uh, class starts with um, a phone, a, a rotary phone. And so these kids, and these are kids in entering grades five to eight, have never seen a rotary phone. They have no idea how it works. We have to get a couple phones and hook them up and show them how it works, but then they take it apart. Then fast forward, so the uh, facilitator of the program will then say, okay, here's an iPhone. So your grandparents use these rotary phones. Today, you're using this iPhone. What will, you, what will your grandchildren be using? And so getting kids seeing kind of what the historical um, development of some of these tools uh, has been over time, but also thinking about the future, it's really, but in this Inventors Lab, actually what's most exciting, I think, is getting kids to look differently at different objects around them. Talk about some of your other programs. You also have programs that help uh, children during that summer gap to ensure that they don't take a step back um, as, they, as they become uh, more distant from the classroom and they're recreating during the summer and so on. Talk about those yes, programs. Yes, so that would be an example of our high impact programs where we really want to partner with community organizations to make a difference. And this effort really started with the United Way. The United Way in our region is really focused on getting kids reading on grade level. So we have a six week long program, which is based on the research. Um, in this past year, we had eight classrooms, I think, throughout the region in our most um, urban communities with the most at risk kids. And the schools pick those kids that participate. And during those six weeks, we're combining science and literacy. So we're working to reduce what you referred to as the summer slide. All kids lose some uh, academic, some of their academic gains during the summer. Uh, low income kids are particularly at risk because they're not, their parents aren't making them read books. They're not going to all these various venues. Parents are, are away during the day. Yes. And, they, and schools are not wrapping around that, uh, that yes. because schools are suspended for the summer. Yes. So um, if we can keep those kids, low income kids, at, the, at least at the same level they were in June when they left school um, and carry that through to September, we can make an enormous difference in their overall academic performance. So by co we co-teach the program. There's a science teacher. Uh, a science educator from Da Vinci in combination with a classroom teacher who has the strong literacy background and the curriculum is integrated. So you've got the language piece yes. and you also have the experiential hands-on play learning. Yes, and so imagine the kid that's not doing that great in school anyway and suddenly he has to go to summer school. It's not an exciting option. But if you can bring in some bugs and robots, summer school becomes summer camp and it gets really interesting and we have had great results on these programs where um, we're maintaining that academic grade level and we're building strong interest in science. And in fact, a lot of the teachers have had us continue with those same kids after school uh, during the school year. In terms of, of how much demand there is for this, are you able to meet the demand that the community has for these types of programs? Or are there, are you always um, sort of struggling to, to provide the funding in order to have uh, enough space for children who have these needs? So that's a really important question. There's enormous demand and our economy, the future of our economy in the greater Lehigh Valley will be very much driven by kids who have strong skills in science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, funding is a key need of ours. So I'll address that part of your question first. The greatest need is for at-risk kids. And the kids that are at risk don't have the dollars. They're not able to come on the field trips or to the summer camps. So the field trips would be the schools, those, those schools that have large low-income populations often don't have the dollars for the field trip experience right. or the dollars for us to come in and partner with them on these programs where we're working with their teachers and their kids over a long period. Zero resource means zero service. Yes. So the, our greatest need actually is for funding. We have very generous support from many of our local corporations and foundations, but there's tremendous need for more to support especially those at-risk kids, both through the school partnerships and through the programs that we're offering at the Science Center, because we have many uh, Lego League, um, uh, first Lego League contests. We have two different groups that are running every Sunday. You know? Talk about Lego League just, just for people who don't. So um, Lego League, it was is a uh, national uh, 
exp uh, organization actually that offers the opportunity for regional groups to come together and put together teams to solve a particular challenge. And there's a challenge every year, and there's various levels. Grade these are design. Levels. These are design, design challenges, challenges yes. with using Lego. Yes. Oh, yes. As, as as the vehicle for for solving these design. Yes. Uh, challenges. Yes. So we started a um, team last year. They had the opportunity to go into New York to see a regional competition. We didn't enter them, but they got there and they realized that, you know what, we can do this stuff. We're just as good as these guys that are here. And so that group is continuing and they will compete this year. And then we have uh, another kind of new group that's following behind them. Uh, we have a Mac manufacturing school, you know, so we're running a lot of after school clubs, Saturday clubs. Um, at the Science Center. Again, at-risk kids, you know, their parents don't have the resources to sign them up for that kind of program. And, and, and the issue is that uh, without resources, you can't provide the service. So the real question is, how important is it to invest in the Lehigh Valley? How important is it to invest in the future of Bethlehem? So a very important thing that we're doing is exposing kids to careers. Many of our programs, we have uh, scientists and engineers from local organizations, healthcare, technology companies that are participating in the programs because we want kids to meet role models and to see what some of those opportunities are. Those companies are participating and sponsoring a lot of the programs because they're looking at their future workforce. And for the most part, you know, we're not going to attract the future workforce from Silicon Valley. We need to grow the next innovators and technicians we need to grow and engineers our own. here. Yes. Lynn Erickson, thank you so much for sharing all of the work of the Da Vinci Science Center, of the work of the community here in the Lehigh Valley uh, surrounding um, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity.